Time is now 741. Tragedy strikes as fans of the Kansas City Chiefs gather to celebrate their Super Bowl win. Yeah, one person was killed and 21 others were injured, including many children, when shots were fired outside Kansas City's Union Station as the parade was getting wrapped up. We are joined by security expert Mike Verdon, the founder and CEO of the Lake Forest Group. Mike, thanks for joining us. You have a background in security for events just like these. What went wrong here? Well, you, know, you did have 800, uh, you know, assets as far as law enforcement, emergency medical, et cetera, on site. But you also had crowd estimates up to a million people. So even with this, you know, very heavy coverage of uh, the first responders, it's still difficult to uh, control a million people. This this uh, tragedy occurred at the very end of the parade. Uh, that's another, I think, important part. Maybe some of those assets had been cut because the parade had been concluded. So with an event like this, because it's a parade and, you know, nobody's really walking through metal detectors mm -hmm. or anything like that, how do you prevent something like this from happening? See, that's a very good point. It's kind of an anomaly when it comes to a large-scale event. Most events now in our society are going to have uh, screening of, of personal items. Uh, they're going to have, like you said, metal detection. This is a open air. There's no ticket to the event, so it's really hard to vet and screen the participants. And that's you know, that's one of the challenges. You kind of have to go with the honor system, and unfortunately, it didn't work out yesterday. Now, with an event like this here in Chicago, we've got the DNC coming up in a couple of months. So how do law enforcement, what can they learn from maybe this situation that happened in Kansas City yesterday to maybe kind of prepare for more events like this going forward? You know, and you think back to in our area to the to the tragedy in Highland Park at the parade. You kind of have to evolve uh, with the way our society is. So I could see in the foreseeable future that there is screening of people attending a parade. Back to the point you made earlier, there would be metal detection, there would be screening of personal items. If that occurred yesterday, and you know, hindsight's 2020, it's still a million people. So it's, it's difficult. It's kind of a microcosm of our society with gun violence. I, I believe that this incident was not connected to the parade. It's just it's another example of gun violence in, in our, our urban cities. What advice do you have, Mike, for families? Because I know, you know, we ask, we've interviewed security experts in the past that say, always be vigilant, you know, keep your head on a swivel. You're at a parade, you know, you're stuffed in there. Your with, guard um, is down. Your yeah. guard is down. You're watching your kids. I mean, would you recommend people not go to these events if they feel like there could be a risk? What would you say? Yeah, I'm not going to tell people not to go to the event, but... For example, with the parade, you know, they had a website, you know, prior to the days leading up to the parade. The par it shows a map of the uh, the parade. It showed medical tents, and, it, and it, you know, you should have the uh, mindset of if there is an emergency, how do we safely evacuate the area? So it comes back to just being more prepared than you, you would have been in the past to a, a ten of an event of this scale. We've had these events at Grant Park for the Bulls, you know, back in the '90s. And similar, you know, similar um, challenges, you know, if there is like a, an emergency, you know, there, there could be a stampede of people. So you should know your environment. We use the term situational awareness. You should know the area. Now, there's been a lot of videos kind of circulating from what happened mm -hmm. yesterday. One showed uh, a random person just kind of tackling one of the suspects. Would you say that's the best approach in a situation like this? I wouldn't say it's the best approach. The best approach is to have law enforcement intervention. I mean, this is just my opinion. I'm grateful that somebody did intervene, right? We don't know what else could have occurred if that person didn't uh, tackle one of the uh, one of the people that are being detained. But my advice is, you know, what our muscle memory tells us: run, hide, and fight. And it's really if you hear if you hear gunshots, to hide initially, then if you can run, which is safely evacuate the area, leave. But I wouldn't recommend a citizen to tackle, an, you know, somebody with a firearm. All right, Mike, thanks so much for your input this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.